Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Kaplor FDM Desktop 3D Printer. This is a machine that sells for actually around $200, $220. There's a coupon that you can apply at checkout. Just a few years back, if you wanted to get a solid 3D printer for your DIY projects, it needed to sell for hundreds of dollars, perhaps even thousands, but the cost has come down significantly. And even now, a $200 printer doesn't seem all that shabby at all. In fact, this version here works with both both PLA and ABS plastics. The heated bed is used for ABS to allow it to stick onto the bed more easily when printing. It takes filaments, uh, which is the printing material, of 1.75 millimeters. Otherwise, the entire unit is made out of aluminum. We have a small LCD display, and you can use it for various projects, different models that you may want to build, and we'll take a closer look at that later on in this video. So here's a very large box. It actually weighs more than 21 pounds. And on the inside, we have the user manual. We also have the assembly steps for putting it together. We've got some accessories here to give you a SD card because that's what includes the software and the drivers on your computer for Mac and PC. These are all parts of the machine that you'll have to assemble. This one for filament break detection, and it's a little small chip. We've got a few strands of sample filament to try and uh, make sure the machine is working. And we also have the USB cable for connecting to your computer, and then all of the individual screws which we'll need to assemble it together. And this will take you about one hour to finish everything, including all the screws they have to plug in, all the motors, and including the belt that you have to install yourself, tighten everything, make sure the calibration is working for the level so again, definitely is not quite uh, ready to go out of the box. So the tools that they give you will be your best friend. Now, as a fair warning, two steps that I had a little bit of trouble with and I needed some extra time to finish was one, making sure that the screw for the Z-axis was tight enough. So really make sure that the screw here is put into the uh, uh, cylinder here that's tied to the motor really tightly. In this case, if that uh, screw is not in there tight enough, obviously the arm here will not lift up and down. It will only move uh, along the vertical axis here. And then the second difficulty that I had was getting the conveyor belt tight enough so that, uh, again, the nozzle here can move along uh, without any problems. That's because this part you have to install by kind of pulling off from the edge uh, to make sure that the belt doesn't have any slack and it's as tight as possible. Uh, but uh, this part is basically held into place using two screws, which are very tough to actually tighten. Um, so at, at first I thought, okay, maybe I need to replace the screws or use some type of super glue to make sure it doesn't move because, again, if it falls off, this entire our belt would uh, be too loose and the printer of course wouldn't work. Uh, but in the end I was able to tighten it just by using a lot of force. And then the third pain point or the third difficulty that I had was getting the filament into the printer's uh, tube that connects of course to the uh, printer head. So this is the part that you have to feed it in yourself. You can uh, press down on the spring and then you can uh, again feed this into the tube. Afterwards of course when the printer is actually running it will be motorized so it keeps on pulling it by itself uh, as it needs more filament. But the first part you have to make sure it at least enters into the uh tube part, there's actually a lot of resistance on these on these points, which are just to keep the wires from tangling up, and uh, this actually adds a little bit of resistance, so whenever you're trying to pull it in for the first time, you have to really kind of press hard to make sure it goes through. So definitely make sure that the filament is uh, tightly going into the tube, and making sure that the tube is tightly pressed all the way down into the nozzle, uh, otherwise uh, it won't extrude any of the plastic. So those are the three uh, hardest parts of the assembly that I personally found, because again, this is my first time going through with a kind of fully uh, disassembled DIY type uh, 3D printer. The other unit that we reviewed a year ago from uh, G-Tech, uh, that's a cloud Wi-Fi printer, is pretty much fully assembled out of the box. Otherwise, if we pop it onto life, the LCD display here does have a pretty bright uh, backlight, which makes it easy to see, and it basically tells us the uh, current temperature of the nozzle head, right now 20 degrees at room temperature, and the bed, which again can be heated up to allow the plastic to stick on better for ABS type plastic, is also at 20 degrees right now. I can tap on this button here, this dial, to go into some of its uh, menu interface. Uh, basically you can go into the uh, prepare page if you want to go into the auto home, so it just uh, starts off for calibration. So I can tap on that and uh, essentially you'll see the printer head start to move and it will end in the position over here. 
uh, for you to then calibrate it for leveling. So each time that you move the printer uh, to a new table or you uh, can remove some of the parts and try to reassemble it, you want to level it. And uh, the kind of um, amount of pressure that it exerts on this piece of paper is even across all four corners. And that will ensure the quality of our prints turn out to be consistent. The paper here is just to prevent the actual printed object from sticking onto the bed. And then you have to use a lot of force to remove it uh, once the plastic dries. And that's why they also give you that uh, little prying tool to uh, help you uh, remove it from the bed when it's still warm and uh, sometimes you'll still see a little bit of residue or tape on the bottom. We can also control the axes manually so for example we can move it such as the uh, Z axis let's say 10 millimeters at a time and just uh, move it say 40 millimeters or 50 millimeters up and then it will just uh, kind of rise up so you're able to control the X Y and Z positions. Also under prepare we're able to do things like uh, preheat the bed and uh, the nozzle so for example preheat PLA versus ABS and that will start to uh, raise the temperature up to 60 degrees for the bed and 200 degrees for the uh, nozzle. We can also start printing from an SD card. The files need to be in G-code format which is standard for all 3D printers and afterwards it's able to read all of these and you can just simply tap on one and it just begins a print. So let's do a quick sample next. In that first time lapse, we simply printed a very small little cube or box, and it took just about 15 minutes to complete the print. It's not filled in completely, just to prevent you from using too much filament, but you also get some structural integrity. This one here uh, was another sample print that came included with the software that I'll show you guys in a moment for the computer. And uh, again, without adjusting any parameters, including size, simply hitting on print, you can see that the overall effect is actually really good. This is quite a small object, and and uh, these type of uh, filament based printers traditionally have a bit more trouble when it's trying to print from a smaller point and then getting larger. Uh, it has a bit more difficulty because the plastic needs to be both uh, pliable so that it sticks to each other layer by layer as it's trying to firm up and cool off. Uh, as such, you can see that if it's trying to go up and print up from difficult angles getting larger, uh, there can be a little bit of roughness. But otherwise, if you have more of a uh, thicker point that's moving inwards, the uh, angles and the edges are still extremely detailed and impressive looking. Overall, I'm definitely impressed by the fine details that it's managed to create, and it feels like a very solid print as far as it doesn't feel like it's going to creak or break, and really we can't make out too much of the layering at all. It just feels like something that was filled in by plastic through a mold or something. We did some other sample prints. Here was a very small Eiffel Tower. Again, a pretty complex uh, print, and again, with these filament-type printers, uh, because the plastic is not completely dried off as it's moving from point to point, it may still pull along a little bit of a uh, string with it. So you can see a little bit of, a, of edges and uh, kind of roughness that you can smoothen out using sandpaper uh, or maybe using a knife of some sort. And if you want something that has you know the finest detail that's uh, perfect even on super tiny uh, objects like this, that's where having perhaps a different type of 3D printer that uses resin or light uh, might be a bit more effective. But those units are a bit more expensive as well compared to these traditional 3D printers that are melting plastic. And finally I did a larger print of a space needle. So again, if we look at it from the very top, again, I am using PLA plastic for all of these demos. You can see here it has almost kind of a shiny texture to it, which looks pretty good. And especially from the top looking down, you can see it looks very detailed and impressive for a uh, quick 3D print. Same thing goes with the base. I am quite satisfied with really what I'm seeing, and it just feels like a very sturdy uh, overall object. This is the largest object that I've printed with it uh, thus far, and the Space Needle here took about uh, an hour and a half to completely print. Again, comparing it directly with the aforementioned GTEC, because it sells for about the same amount of uh, money, the printing volume of the this unit here is also a lot larger with these open arms, so you can technically print something much larger and taller, such as a vase, maybe even a mask, maybe an action figure, or something that's real-sized even, which is pretty cool. But obviously, as your objects start getting larger, it's going to take longer for 
for you to print it as well. Compared to the GTEC, the overall performance is also a lot more stable. On that particular unit, I tried doing the same print of the Space Needle and it failed. Uh, it got to halfway onto the um, base here and then once it tried to kind of print upwards with this uh, Space Needle head, it basically uh, started to form a lump and the printer head clogged and the print basically stopped. So uh, comparatively, this one here, I haven't needed to stop it for any reason, and all of these prints here have turned out actually really well without too much of uh, calibration needed after the initial setup. Let's take a closer look at the Companion PC app next. Here are the contents of the SD card. You can basically see some sample prints in uh, G-code format. We also see some PDF guides to install the driver as well as install the software, which is called Cura. It's a standard for many 3D printers, which is good. And we also see a video for putting the parts together again, which I really recommend because it's a little easier to follow along than the user manual in my opinion. So here we have it, the Cura interface, which should be very familiar to anyone who's used, uh, again, 3D printers in the past. We just have a visualization of the surface area uh, that's uh, representing the bed of the printer. I can load uh, different uh, files from my computer. And by the way, the 3D printing community is so uh, widespread these days that you can find lots of free uh, render G-code files just online. There's plenty of websites for you to just print out some cool things that other people have designed already. Just like downloading a software app on your phone, uh, you know, it takes just a few seconds and then you open up the file using Cura. You can see it here like this Eiffel Tower that uh, someone else actually designed, I can move it around, uh, position it differently on the on the bed here, and it will just re-render and tell me the, again, rough duration that it takes to print, how long and how much filament it will take. So our printer has a bed size of 220 by 220 by 250 for the height. That's the z-axis. We can also do things like check out uh, different types of layering, like for example, uh, if we want to look at it like a transparent objects, we want to look at all the different layers. You can see it's a rendering here in real time, and how the printer actually will go about and print it uh, and we can see the different layers uh, you know going up one by one uh, which is actually very cool. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this Kablor 3D printer. Again, for only around $200, I think that it's a great value if you're looking for a unit that performs really well. Maybe not going to give you uh, industrial accuracy if you do want something that has you know 100% of details uh, if you're looking at super tiny prints. But uh, overall, as far as these more traditional plastic-based uh, uh, 3D printers are concerned, which melts, again, the uh, filament as it's uh, being fed through, I do think that the performance is much better than what you're paying for. Just a very fun product in general to try out and to use. And I think now that the price is so affordable, it really is something that's worth taking a closer look at, even for those that maybe haven't been as interested in 3D printers in the past. Just because now, if you think about it, it's cheaper than even uh, a mid-end smartphone these days. So be sure to check out more details in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Kaplor 3D Printer.